Hello there, Russian Fanatics. It's your host here. Once again, it is Team RI back with a brand new episode of Team RI's Wrestling Podcast, episode number 53. Sorry about last week. It was very, very difficult to get a guest, so I just skipped it, but I'm back this week. Um, this guy who's on my podcast, he's been on my podcast for a while, he does a lot of things on YouTube and Facebook and all the good stuff. He will introduce himself and plug his social media and all good stuff. So take it away, my guest. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, Justin Kish here. You guys can uh, find me on Twitter at Justin David Kish. Um, I also do my own blogs. I also post statuses on my personal account. Um, go to search my name, Justin David Kish. Like I said, Twitter, Just David Kish. Like NexusSportsNetwork.com. You guys get all the information in sports, news, analysis, basically anything in the world of sports. So go check those out. Thank you. You're very welcome, and all his social links are down below if you did not understand him. Okay, first thing first, let's discuss about this. Um, Gail Kim. Now, she was a badass, and um, she was jumping from company to company, right? Like, WTNA, WTNA, right? At first? Yeah, I remember she was back in. Okay. Now, when she was in WWE, or, yeah, she... She got, um, was she, let me see if I'm right, um, she was a woman champion, um, at first, correct? Um, uh, from what I know, she didn't really win a championship in the WWE, I think they kind of overlooked her, because every time she would go to the WWE or come back to the WWE, they would just not use her, and that okay. was the biggest problem, I think if she was to come back today to the WWE, she would have been a part or a great addition to this so-called uh, women's revolution. So yeah. I think if she was to come back today, she would have been a big part of it. Oh, yeah. So, she did a lot of stupid storylines with Dana Bryan and some stupid... So, she quit, came back, quit, come back, and she said, I'm tired of this bullshit. I know this is old news, but I don't get my thoughts on the matter. So, I'm assuming she's doing good things in TNA. I don't watch TNA. Um, so, is she doing good in TNA? Is she a champion? She's had multiple reigns as the knockout champion in TNA. Um, she's going to be the first female inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame. I think that was announced back in June. I think that's when they do have Bound for Glory. Um, but I want to say, you know, she's been, I think, you know, in her entire career, you know, she owes it to TNA. You know, TNA saw something in her. You know, I think that, you know, if Gabe Ken was in the WWE today, I think she could end up being a nice option. If they actually used her correctly, I think that Gail Kim can end up becoming one of the top, you know, women's wrestlers um, on the WWE roster right now. I think that she'll have put on some great matches, you know, with Becky Lynch or Sasha Banks or Charlotte. So Yeah. Um, but, you know, she's doing it over in, TN, or over in TNA, Impact Wrestling. Um, they see it more in her in uh, Impact, and they're giving her the biggest push and the push that she deserves. Yes. And I think she's very beautiful. Is she single or she's dating anyone? Do you know? Uh, I don't. I think she's married to some chef or something like that. But she's beautiful, you know. Did she, Maybe she go hit her? Up. What? Maybe she go hit her up. Yeah. A guy like That's me, a YouTube, enough. a YouTuber, uh, no thanks. I mean, I wish, but most girl like that will nothing. Hey, don't be scared, man. The only thing, the worst thing that she can do is say no. Yeah, you're right about that. I don't know how old is she, but age does not really matter anyway, you know. But she's very hot, you know. But um. I think she didn't. She did a lot of stupid storyline back in the day when she was when she first debuted in WWE. Um, she had kind of like a Tomb Raider kind of back when she first first came into the WWE. Okay. Um, but from there she was basically not, you know, really much in in her first run with the WWE. But second run, she, she had like a a love triangle with her and the the Bellows, right? Something like that. Yeah, that was, that was kind of an interesting storyline. The Bellows trying to take the virginity of Daniel Bryan. So. Yeah. Um, and Gail Kim was Daniel Bryan's girlfriend, so that only lasted for about a month and a half, I think. Was that re really, or was that just part of the storyline? No, that was just part of the story, okay. to be honest. Honestly, I think because, um, I want to say it was during Total Divas, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's kind of like one of those sins of mine. I do watch Total Divas. You know, I'm a big wrestling fan, so I watch just about anything wrestling. Yeah. Um, Brie Bella actually met Daniel Bryan through their storyline. That's how they actually got together, yep. so... It's a good show. I don't give a shit what people say. I love it. I'm not saying I like it. I mean, it's okay. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh my god, Total Divas is on. Gotta catch it. You know, I'm just going to end up saying, 
you know, Total Divas is on. Who cares? If I want to watch it today? No, I'll watch it next week and possibly catch two episodes back to back. We'll just I'll see how it goes. Yeah. Do you think uh, Gail Kim? Did she leave on bad terms, or do you know? Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm still catching up on recent TNA shows. I don't even know she actually left the company right now. Okay. Um, but I think she's still within the company right now because I don't think that they would have put her in the Hall of Fame knowing that she's no longer with the company. And I think that once Bountiful Glory is, is that's when they really, you know, announce the Super I mean, the TNA Hall of Fame is complete bullshit. Yeah. I mean, it does not make no sense to me. I mean, God forbid, Kurt Angle's speech last year, I think it was, he didn't give a living shit out of that entire, you know, Hall of Fame for TNA. I mean, I, I respect TNA. I'm, I'm a TNA original fan. I remember watching it back in around, you know, 03. I even watched the first pay-per-view of TNA, and I was only, at like, what, 10 years old, 11 years old? Yeah, that's when, so, TNA, I mean, that's when TNA used to be good, Justin. I mean, I've always said that TNA, TNA is good. I mean, it's always going to be number two to the WWE. And, but, you know, you also got to look at, you know, the superstars. You know, they've really took former WWE superstars and made them into, you know, big names. I mean, look at Christian Cage. Christian Cage, multiple-time TNA champion, you know, had some great runs there. I know he, they did well with Kurt Angle because Kurt Angle had the majority of his career in TNA rather than the WWE. Some people kind of, like, overlook that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Booker T did decent. Kevin Nash was just, you know, off and on. Um, but they, they, they've been doing some great, you know, hits and misses with former WWE talent on TNA, and I think Kurt Angle, a Christian Cage, you know, and even a Gail Kim. Those are, you know, some subjects that are, you know, that really excelled well in TNA. Oh, yeah, and Sting also, you know? Yeah, well, Sting didn't really, I mean, you can look at it, you know, but Sting only had a, a bit of a cup of coffee in the WWE, but that was not until after he went to the WWE, uh, until after he left TNA to come to the WWE. It was just to, too many years to, you know, too late, honestly. I think that he could he should have signed with the WWE in the early days. Yeah, pretty much. It comes down to money or uh, commitment to TNA. Switching gears, another um, lovely lady is Lita. She, she's doing great things. You know, she's doing this W uh, networks. Um, um, you know, like um, they, she discussed about the um, women's revolution and all that crap. Um, I like Lita. Is she dating anyone, or is she married, or, or what? Do you know? I don't know, man. <laughs> I know that's off. Are you, try, are you trying to hit up all the divas right now? Uh, uh yeah, uh, but like that single loop right now, and trying to ask for like Lita's number, Gail Kim's number. Yeah, I'm gonna ask him, but probably. Yeah, are, you gonna, are you gonna ask for uh Maurice's number next? Uh, no. No, probably gonna block me on Twitter. I know you see this guy says st stalker. You know, block me, block, block this dude. You know, on Twitter. You ask uh, Velvet Sky's name. Velvet Sky. Try to push her out of Bubba Ray Dudley's arms. Yeah, yeah, she is hot too. She's hot, yeah. But if I had to choose one wrestling-related woman to be in a relationship with. I mean, some will say Becky Lynch, some will say Sasha Banks. I mean, I would definitely would like to be in a relationship if it's a women's wrestler. It would have to end up being Velvet Sky. Do you think she's ever going to go WWE or, or she's no. staying put wherever she's at? She's going to hit the indies. I mean, there's no need for her to come to the WWE right now. Okay. I mean, the Dudley boys are gone, so there's no point for her to do a right solo in the WWE. Yeah, um, do you like Lita's speech, um, that one you at the Hall of Fame, that was a g very g good speech, but do you think it's long, or not long enough for her, that speech? It was right on, it was right on point, you Okay. Know, she basically covered everything, and pretty good speech. Yeah, so I guess she's like a, um, um, I forget what she's doing, but I think she does before pay reviews, right, like a, um, um, like a, a, a an analyst, you know, like, they talk, I like do. They do for sports, but I think she's doing a good job. So I, I'm assuming that Dudley's paying her a decent money, uh, much money. Because if not, then she will reject that um, offer. You know, Lita. Yeah, yeah. She's doing all the pre-shows for Raw and the pay-per-views. So okay, it's eh, pretty cool. Do you think she? Do you think uh, she'll be able to wrestle again, or do you think no? Because her body and her in injuries from the past. Took a toll on her. She can be like a special, like a guest, like maybe 
every once in a blue moon if she if she really wants to. Okay. I think right now she's just doing commentary. Okay. So is is, it, is there a dream match for her in 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 for WWE for the women's division for her for Mania or uh, a, or I SummerSlam? Say if I had to project her, I mean, I would love to see one more match between her and Trish Stratus. I would love to see her and Sasha Banks. You know, what one match that I would really love to see would be um, Lita versus Charlotte. I think that would be a great match. Okay. And, and you don't need a build up, really. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I'm just not. It has to be a mania. It has to be, or that, or or SummerSlam. You know, in the future. I mean, yeah, I mean, it depends on you know if, when she wants to come back, and you know if, if if everything's right for her to come back. Yeah. Um. Let's switch gears about Test. I know it has been many years since he passed away. He's the one who was going to marry uh, Stephanie, but Triple H took over. You know, not took over, but um, um, it's, you know the whole story. But were you a fan of Test as a wrestler or not really? I, I love Test. Um, I know the WWE gave him a big push in 90, late 98 into 99, yeah. I want to say. And I thought it would be a good, you know, at the time growing up, you know, I was still a young fan in 99, 98. So I started watching in the summer of 99, but I was going back and watching some of the old classics on Raw on the network, and I was like, you know, maybe Tess could get, end up becoming a champion, because, you know, when you're a young, you're a wrestling fan, you wouldn't give a crap who is world champion. Yeah, pretty much. So I thought that, you know, maybe Tess could end up becoming a champion, but, you know, he never really got past, you know, the mid-card. And, you know, after that storyline was, you know, with Stephanie and Triple H, he never got past mid-card status until, nope. honestly, he hit ECW, like, years and years and years later. Yeah. When he started having a, a feud with Bobby Lashley. So, you know, that was his only, you know, big-time push. He's been put into tag teams. He's been put into, you know, mid-card championships. I think the hardcore title multiple times. I think the European title at one point. I mean, there's just so many things that, you know... They could have done with him, but he just never got past that mid card status. Yep. And and he's a pretty um big guy, um great speed, you know, great athlete. Of course, he passed away because I th I'm thinking drugs, right? That's what happened to him. I I'm guessing. I mean, I don't like to go back and you know li listen to like people talking about like the deaths, the wrestlers. I mean, why well, talk about their deaths? We can talk about what they did in the ring, you know? Yeah. It, it's sad that, you know, these wrestlers, you know, I know this is a very touchy subject, these wrestlers, they passed away so damn young, you know? It's very sad, Justin, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Tess really had, like, a complete, you know, look, you know, kind of like a resurgence in his look when he cut the long hair. I thought that he could have ended up becoming, you know, a champion down the line. Maybe if he was just still with us right now, will he be in the WWE? I don't think so. I yeah. think he probably would be in TNA. But he'll still be probably one of TNA's, you know, top superstars. Yeah, do you I think he still has a lot of the uh, he still has a lot of ability to become a, a big time superstar even if he was still with us right now. Do you think he's a future W Hall of Famer or no? I think, you know, with, you know, drug related deaths in the U in the in the UFC, the WWE, I think it's gonna be a bit controversial. Okay. I think he eventually will, because I mean, goddamn, everybody can get into the WWE Hall of Fame right now. Yeah, look okay, at Coco Beware, huh? I mean, Coco Beware, Coco Beware was a legend. I, why not put him in the Hall of Fame? I mean, Slick got in there. Slick was awesome. Um, fucking Drew Carey was even in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah. Like, what kind of shit is this? They put anybody in the Hall of Fame. It don't matter, you know? Celebrity yeah. or wrestler, it don't matter these days, you know? I mean, God forbid, like, the next fan that comes in and interrupts a promo, he'll probably end up being in the Hall of Fame. Yep, it's going to be um, um, John Stewart. He'll be in the Hall of Fame because... What happened at summertime back to back years? So watch, he'd be in the Hall of Fame. More than likely. Sad, but what I said again, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna, I said before, I'm gonna say it again. W needs to eliminate the Hall of Fame, not the Hall of Fame, the um, the celebrity wing. But it's never gonna happen, never. It, it really makes no. I mean, I can understand that because when we went through that whole entire or era or that whole entire like few months I think about a year actually is when they have a special guest every single Monday yes I mean that's probably why yep I mean Bob Euchre was uh, is in the Hall of Fame I think goddamn Shaquille O'Neal will be in the Hall of Fame this coming year yep oh my gosh it just makes me mad you know 
I mean, at first it's okay, and just and and then it just gets so boring and dull. Same old crap every single Monday night, you know. Back in the other day. Well, I mean, what what kind of time period are we talking? What do you mean? I'm talking about the, um when the WWE had these special guest hosts. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh well, the ho well you were, but yeah, I mean it's 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 off and on. It's 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 okay to an extent, but they really kind of because that that was when the PG era really drained down the company. Yes, I mean they had the fucking Muppets on. They had just so many crappy just guests that didn't do anything. Nope. I think the bottom line was when they had the Muppets on. Yep. It was stupid. Oh, it was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. But did you do you still watch that episode that that one or you say hell I'm skipping it? I will only go back and watch that time period just to watch CM Punk related stuff. Okay. Um. Were you a fan of Bill Demont back in the day? I know he was like a a, a mid carter in WCW, and I don't know if he still is a NXT trainer. But were you a fan of him back in the day? Um, I wasn't really too familiar. I know, you know, back in the late day, final year, couple of years in the WCW, Hugh Morris, I think he was also part of the Misfits in Action, if yes. you guys can remember who that is. But I know bits and pieces of, uh, of uh, Bill DeMott, Hugh Morris. He had an awesome wrestling team in uh, 2003 with the, with the WWE. Yes. Um, is he still with the company? Is he still with the NXT, like the trainers, or what's the deal with that? Nah, he, he been gone after that whole bullying allegations and oh stuff wow like that. okay so he's out of a job then huh he's on the independent scene i mean i don't know exactly what he's doing i know he's probably either commentating on the independent scene or what whoever the hell knows what he's doing no one really hasn't heard anything from him okay so he's like I mean he's not gonna be no Hall of Famer because he won he never won any championships, did he in WCW? I don't remember if he did or not. I think he won the tag titles. Okay. So nothing really major, major, right? I know he, he had his group with Booker T called Major um not ma yeah, Major Guns was in it, but what's that stable called? Misfits in action. Okay, that's the one, okay. Yeah, you just mentioned that. But that's just a okay stable, wasn't it? It's not really a big impact, was it, for WCW? Uh, not, not really. Okay. Uh, honest to God, it wasn't really much of anything. Okay. I guess he don't care. He he gets paid regardless. He don't give a shit what kind of um um storyline he had back then. He don't care, did he? I mean, it, it's a it, it was a good, it was a big kind of tag team that had like Travel Guerrero and. Major Guns and you know a bunch of other guys who I don't know at the top of my head. Okay. I mean, was he sunk down into it? Kind of. But, I think. You know, he was not going to go above that. Yeah. Um. Now, Mister Wonderful, he was an awesome wrestler back in the eighties. He had a few with Hogan and a lot of legends. Um. Do you think he will ever come back for an appearance for Raw, Mister Wonderful? Not that I know, okay. to be honest with you. I don't know anything about him right now, if his health is good. I mean, hopefully he has a full build of health. He can probably do something down the line. Yeah. He's in the Hall of Fame, right, Mr. Wonderful? Yeah, okay. 2005. Okay. Now, so far, I know we have a lot of classes. In your eyes, what is the best class for W so far? The best class, in your eyes. What do you mean? You know, like, like weight class? No, like like 05, you know, since they did it, you know, for the oh, best, best year in wrestling? Yeah, that's yeah, for the Hall of Fame class. That's what I'm trying to say. The year? I want to say I mean 2005 had some good ones, 2004 had some good ones. I mean, I think 2005 really was like the big Mac Daddy of them all. I had Hulk Hogan, Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volkov. I mean, that list was just out of control. I mean, I mean, you can look up the year where Stone Cold got inducted, um, but I think 05 had a, a lot of the big time superstars who really dominated the golden ages of wrestling, the golden era. Yes. So I mean, I would have to say probably 05 was. 06 was a good one too. 06, 
2006 was great. I mean, I liked the 2006. I think that was the year Eddie Guerrero got in. That was probably the most emotional yes. that I've gotten into any sort of Hall of Fame. I mean, I respect every single wrestler that gets put into the Hall of Fame that's, you know, did their time in the WWE and, you know, other promotions. So, but, you know, Eddie Guerrero's Hall of Fame speech when you had guys like Mysterio, Chava, I think Ben Wall was on the panel. I mean, I'll probably have to go back tonight and rewatch it because that was probably my favorite speech of all time. So. Yeah, it was good. Um, uh, last but not least, what's your thoughts on Joey Styles got released from the WWE? recently were you kind of shocked or do you know that was gonna come in a way not really i mean i think joey styles needs to you know do some stuff on the indies i know he's not doing like interview work or anything for like you know sites like mine or any or any other sites like that but i know he's been doing like digital work for the wwe i want to say okay but you know this is his opportunity to go and you know commenting the house of hardcore for tommy dreamer's promotion i think that would be the best thing why did they release him? Is it they came down to money or too much politics backstage I again? Had, uh, there, I think he said some comments. I know that was something that was brought up. He said comments towards some sort of subject. Okay. Um, and it just came out kind of bad. So. Okay. Now I know he was a freaking legend in ECW. He was all right in when they brought him in in WWE. So I think he's more popular in the ECW brand, right? The, I mean, the original brand, you know, the ECW, Paul Heyman brand. Yeah, I love the ECW. I mean, my, you know, people who do know me, you know, my top three favorite wrestlers is Kevin Owens, Raven, and Vampiro. So, I mean, I've been watching a lot. I mainly watch, you know, ECW on the network just to check out some uh, classic, you know, Raven matches with him and Tommy Dreamer. So, I mean, that's basically that. <laughs> He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, oh, Justin. Who, um, Joey Styles? Yes. Yeah. He, he actually does deserve it, but, you know, when you get cut from the promotion just for him to accept it, is he really, is he going to accept it? That's the thing. Will he accept it? He will. I know that, I know he was, uh, I liked him on commentating, on commentating on Raw. Yeah. Back in the, I want to say 2006. Yeah. Then he had a little outburst with Jerry King Lawler. Was that part of the storyline, or was that um, um, real, r really happened? Oh, the one night stand ordeal. No, no, the time that um he came out raw and cut a bad, pro I mean um a heel promo on the King, you know. That was all just work. Okay. Cause that's when the ECW brand restarted. Okay. Can you imagine if he really did that? I, he'd be fired in a heartbeat. More than likely. And W off the record, W needs to let the wrestlers talk themselves. Hell to these writers. These writers today are just jackasses, you know, for Raw SmackDown. It's stupid, you know? They're just trying to play week to week. They're not trying to play like Q. I mean, they have to open up. I think that's why they need to drop the PG and just, you yes. know, with the ratings on Raw going down the drain. Yeah. I know last night's Raw was like, great show yes my boy kevin owens won the title very fun night but you gotta let them have a little bit more space you know am i saying drop a cuss word every five or six seconds no just branch out get the storylines in a little bit more having a little bit more entertainment in the storylines not just have you know your sick little twisted face i mean that's not intimidating enough let's get this something a little bit more intimidating let it be a little bit more PG. You know, we're not going to get that anytime soon. The WWE is just, oh, little five-year-old Billy and two-year-old Johnny. I mean, these are our, these are our, our, these are the part core fans. You know, the two five-year-old fans. I mean, the wrestling is fantastic now. So, but you know, the promos, the build-ups to it, it kind of goes up and it kind of goes down. It's like a, it's like a weight scale. Yeah, if you think about it, Justin, there's no really no build up. They just go into these matches. Most likely, for example, tonight on SmackDown, Randy Orton challenged um, Bray Wyatt for a match for Backlash. There's not really no build up. They just he just calls him out, you know. I love the promo tonight. I mean, the promo for SmackDown tonight. If you check that out, that was a fucking awesome moment. I loved it. I was really into it. Yeah, but once again, um, oh, SmackDown can't tap. Top Raw from um, the, the main event. The main event was awesome. It was. 
Raw overbeat SmackDown this week. I think Raw had a much better show. I mean, SmackDown had another good show. You know, if I had to rate it, I'd probably give it a 3 out of 5. I mean, they opened up well with The Miz, and, uh, they, and then later on, on Talking Smack, it's just been announced that Ziggler and The Miz will be going at it on um, that backlash, so that's going to be for the Intercontinental title. You know, you know he's going to be tanned, don't matter. Uh, I mean, I can see it, but, you know, Dolph Ziggler going into and losing back-to-back -back title matches, I mean, if they really want to ride this thing with The Miz and Dolph Ziggler, you have Ziggler winning at Backlash, Ziggler winning the IC title, and it'll only make this storyline incredible. It's going to give The Miz and it's going to give Dolph Ziggler something to do. They're the two superstars right now that the WWE is currently pushing in the middle of the card. So if you really want to do something with them, let Dolph Ziggler end up winning the title the first run, and then hopefully, you know, it, it can, but I don't want to see like a title going, you know, bounce around from Miz to uh, Ziggler, Miz to Ziggler, Miz yeah. to Ziggler. I don't want to see that, you know. I think that Dolph Ziggler needs to at least pull out a victory against the Miz and win the title. I don't know if it's going to end up becoming the, the first time around, maybe the second. Yeah, so, and they have, the Miz and, and Dolph, they have some great chemistry together. Um, what else? So, I guess you're not a really big fan of these, uh, so many pay-per-views now ever since the the brand split, huh? What's that? You cut, you cut out. I'm sorry. I said, I guess you're not a big fan of two pay-per-views in a month like they used to do back in the day. There's so much pay-per-views. Uh, I think it's like, what, 18 pay-per-views a year total? I love the, the concept of the brand split because it brings credibility back to, you know, each of the brands. I just wish that Raw was two hours yeah. because now we're not getting, you know, the longest time to just sit and watch a lot, a lot of the uh, commercials. I think commercials in the USA now are drag ass. Yes. Um, I think that, you know, how it should go, I think SmackDown should go back to having the Cruiserweight division. Um, there's just so many things that the WWE right now is doing wrong. Like, the biggest thing, the fucking belt designs, the universal title. I know, tell me about it. It looks like a fruit roll-up. Yeah, it seemed like they got lazy. I mean, I understand for SmackDown, but for all, really, you got a copy of a SmackDown, the design, really? Come on, now. I don't really like the design of the universal title, I mean, because the WWE is getting too lazy with the, with the title designs. Yep. I mean, the U.S. title is going to be the next title that, you know, I see a lot of these concepts that people are doing for the U.S. title, that the WWE wants to redesign the U.S. title. And they look really nice. I would, I'd really like these new concepts that they're doing for the U.S. title. The IC title should remain the same. Um, the tag titles, because it, 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 it feels like the WWE did not take the time to really revamp, relook these tag titles. I think the tag titles from um, the inception in 2002 when they had the new look tag titles, those look badass with the blue globe. Yes. The Raw had the red globe. I mean, those titles look like legitimate tag team titles. These ones look like uh, pennies and dimes. It's just nothing is really clicking too well. I mean, I know that they had the gladiators on them. It's just you cannot have the tag team titles look the same but different colors. I mean, the strap on the tag team titles look like a blue fruit roll-up. You know, the tag titles on Raw just look like, you know, nickels or look like pennies. It's just there's nothing that really stands out from the difference. There's no difference really except the change of color of the strap and what the color is on the on the side plates and the actual plate itself. It's just it's just not working. You know the universal title looks like a reverse. You know a women's a women's championship title. The SmackDown you know women's champion looks the same, but it's just a blue strap. It, there's just nothing that the WWE did. They did not put time. They did not put effort. They didn't put the money into you know try to make these ti these uh these titles look different. I agree. And we both know, Justin, they have the money, they just want to uh, be creative, they just want to get lazy. They should bring back the belt that, um, they had before, um, the SmackDown, I love that one, that was awesome. I mean, yeah, I mean, the SmackDown ones were awesome, I love the SmackDown yes. titles. Yes, you talking about, I think it was 03, right, that that one? Yeah, that was the, uh, the, the tag titles, right? Yes. Yeah, they came in in 2002 during that uh, tag tournament. Yes. That they had, well, I think I think that was when Mysterio and Edge took on uh, Angle and Benoit. I want to say that was even at a Backlash pay per view. No, it was um, um, I think, but they met again. <clears throat> they met again for No Mercy. I don't was I don't think it was No Mercy because it was Backlash 2002. Well, I don't remember, but 
Um, anyway, yeah, well, I wonder what happened to the belts. Do you think they, they, they in a museum somewhere? I'd like to see those old belts again, you know? That'd be sweet if they bring them back, but they don't. Um, I, I don't think they'll bring it back. I mean, uh, you know, I know that, you know, other teams have, like, the WWE has taken, like, there's these photos that you can find on the WWE website where it's, like, a blast from the past. Like, you can see Kevin Owens wearing the 19, the late or the early 1990s title belt. Yeah. Um, the or the early day women's title belt for the ladies. It's just, there's just so many, you know, concepts that they're bringing back. Maybe they can end up doing, like, a photo shoot with the old tag titles for the tag teams. Mm -hmm. But that's something that's going down. So, speaking of Kevin Owens, do you think, um, I know when Seth Rollins cash in, do you think uh, KO is going to have a better run than Seth Rollins did? Because his, when he was champion, he was not defending that well, and he was a poor champion. It's not his fault. It's the creators, you know what I'm saying? Well, I like what the way that the WWE is currently booking it right now. You know, Kevin Owens was originally going to be battling Finn Balor to Survivor Series. I don't know what their initial plan was on who's going to win in the title. Is it going to be Finn Balor retaining against Kevin Owens, or is it going to be Kevin Owens winning the title against Finn Balor at Survivor Series? Uh, but, you know, now that Balor is out with the uh, shoulder injury, they decided to put the title in. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of like a late timing as well. I think Kevin Owens was well-deserving of, you know, the title two maybe three months ago or even right after he defeated John Cena in the, in those in, in the, you know the fir in the first matchup you know that just solidified him as he is a sure thing you know main eventer and God knows everybody loves Kevin Owens I love Kevin Owens since Ring of Honor now, I love Kevin Owens since PWG do you do you think um it seems like we're gonna see hopefully uh Triple H versus Seth because that match supposed to happen a couple years ago but Seth got injured because, you know, what happened, you know? The house show? Um, not, I'm not familiar with that, but um, that's the road that they're going down right now, it seems like. Maybe, but um, because Triple H is do, do a, does a better pedigree than Seth, I think so. And I don't know if Seth Rollins is going to chase it after Kevin Owens for the belt. I'm assuming he is at Clash Are you comparing uh, a Stephanie McMahon pedigree to a Seth Rollins pedigree? Who, me? Yeah. Stephanie? I don't say Stephanie, I say Seth. Seth? I thought you said Stephanie. No, no, no. She sucks at it. She sucks anyway, regardless as a wrestler anyway. But she does a good job whatever she does. It, it seemed like to me, um, on Raw, she it looked like she's turning face or... And then Triple H is just the heel. I don't know. I'm just I'm just so baffled, you know. But uh, I, this is just my guess. Next week a Raw, it'd be an average Raw. And then the final week, it'd be a good Raw. It, it just seemed like every other Raw well, is good, WWE you know. WWE has this opportunity right now with them. They can do make, uh, Helmsley versus Helmsley or Levesque versus Levesque. However the hell do you want to put it, uh, put it because... You know, Stephanie has Seth Rollins, even though Seth Rollins kind of got in her face. You yeah. can do Seth Rollins versus Triple H's Kevin Owens. That's that's the way that I can see it going down. But a lot of people are bringing up this whole NXT invasion. Don't involve NXT in, in like, any kind of storyline. NXT is developmental and should be developmental only. I mean, if you want to do it like that, you know, good luck with it because invasion angles, if you look back at the invasion of one, that went so well. And I just, it just does not play me. I would never do well, that if you, other angle. Oh, sorry to cut you off. If you think about it, NXT is not really a develop. I mean, it is, but they got storylines. I'm assuming they are. And they doing good. It's way better than the 2010 uh, NXT version. That that division sucks ass, you know? That's why I stopped watching, you know? It sucked. I mean, I was, uh, I mean, I didn't really give two fucks about NXT back in the early days when it was actually just like a reality TV show. Yeah. People trying to end up becoming the next tough enough, it seemed like. But yep, it's, it's, it's stupid. So NXT I, I, really I, I, really came from the crossroads, so I it think, nice Justin, I think, I don't think it's a, um, I think it's a third brand, but that's just my uh, opinion on it, you know? Yeah. But... I don't know. Yes, Raw. I mentioned this time after time in my videos. Raw needs to go back to two hours. That's never gonna happen because USA is paying WWE lots of money, you know, for a third hour, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it drags on, and when football season, it'll be here before you know it. Monday Night Football is kicking is gonna kick Raw's ass once again, 
and WWE's not going to do nothing about it. Yeah, that's when the WWE, because football season brings down Monday Night Raw's numbers Big for the time. last few years yes. now, and that's the, that's the biggest issue that WWE has. That's why the WWE is giving us all that they can right now, because they got to compete. You know, what's going to end up bringing, you know, what's going to stick, you know, wrestling fans and, pro, and uh, pro football fans, you know, you can watch either or. Or either on your laptop or on your on your on your TV. I mean, it's double up on sports for the night. But you know, the WWE is trying to pull something out of their ass, including the Raw brand. And this is where I think that SmackDown's going to have the bigger advantage to have viewers because there's no Tuesday night football. So I mean, I think SmackDown's going to end up dominating a lot of the best action when it comes to football season. But then again, you know, Raw's going to have to start pulling some realistic storylines, meaningful stuff, you know, during football season because that's when the WWE gets killed. And the WWE does have its, you know, ups and downs following the football season. You know, they can do a hit and miss shows over time, but, you know, this is the, this is crunch time. This is a big year for football, and every year is a big year for football, but they really got to start doing something. They got to get us, you know, re-energized and get us, you know, going for this coming year. Yeah, McMahon don't give a damn, man. You know that. He just gives a shit about one thing in WWE. He don't give a shit this competition or no competition, you know? He don't care. He cares about the product. I mean, he wouldn't be a promoter if he didn't, and you'll be a pretty shitty promoter if he just didn't care. Yeah, he. Yeah, I know, but some things lately he had bad decisions, you know? Like what? I can't think of one right now. <laughs> you put me on the spot right now. Like, um. Oh, shit. Some NXT guys he's not a big fan of. Um. I don't know. I just can't. Um... Well, that's why they got the brand split. I mean, yeah, like, really, like, 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 like Vince McMahon something in end zone cast. I mean, that's why when cast, when mainly cast, honestly. Yeah, I think I mentioned my video. He will become champion. What you know, down the road he will be because McMahon loves the tall guys. He loves these super heat, super heat, super guys like um. Big Show, Andre the Giant, you know, um, Kevin Nash, and the list goes on. He's not really a big fan of, like, CM Punk kind of guys, or Daniel Bryan, or Rey Mysterio. I mean, he is, but not as, like, the huge guys, you know? Yeah, but clarify me with this. What superstar besides The Rock, besides Stone Cold Steve Austin, besides a Triple H, besides an Undertaker, has Big Man been solely put on as a WWE champion? Not many. It's very hard. Exactly. But that's why, you know, those guys, you know, during that time were the biggest superstars of their time. Well, Kurt Angle is good, those too, but... Kurt Angle could dip from the company after, you know, he wasn't in a big title picture. You know, he was facing off against, you know, ups and downs of guys, you know, in his, in his last run the company. I mean, is there going to be a return of Kurt Angle? Probably. It's going to be a one-off kind of ordeal. Like, I think Stone Cold Steve Austin, when he came back to the WWE in 2003, after walking out uh, after, you know, after the WWE basically won him a job out to Brock Lesnar, it's just the WWE is, is having some poor decision makings. And that's where I agree with you that. You know, there have been a poor, lot of poor decision makings as that's why superstars are not resigning deals. That's why the superstars are hitting free agent markets. And, you know, don't even bring up the whole Ryback situation. Yeah. Ryback said that he... he uh, Decline a one point three million dollar contract. That's fucking bullshit. Ryback is not even worth one point three million in professional wrestling. Ryback is a dud. I mean, I'm not here to bash the superstar or anything like that. It's just he is very hurtful. You know, even look at CM Punk. CM Punk said he's very hurtful in the ring. You know, Seth Rollins is hurtful as well, but at least Seth Rollins is worth the one point three million. What's your quick thoughts on um the real leaving again? Leaving? The real. The real? Yeah. Well, drop the ball. You know, they dropped the big ball on him. He won the U.S. title from Cena at Hell in a Cell last year. And that was it. <laughs> and that was basically it. That's what you can call it. You know, he did the whole thing with the League of Nations. That was a bullshit kind of thing. Yeah, that was stupid. I mean, if they're going to bring back an international, if they're going to bring back an international brand, or, or not really bring it back, but they're going to put together a nice group of people to have to represent a country. Back in WWE 2K12, the United Kingdom. Now that is a thing that they should do. Yeah, but 
I wish him better luck. I'm not a big fan of him. Probably you were, but I, I can't really get into it, Dorito. I don't know why. I just can't never get into him. Yeah, some people like to go off on like this big blam saying, Oh, Del Rio's not a good in-ring wrestler. He sucks. I'm not, I don't like him. Uh, he's just not the best wrestler. I mean, no. If you actually sit there and watch wrestling, and rather than just trying to get rich off YouTube and just putting news rumors and updates on there and not actually do your homework, Del Rio puts on great matches. It's just like the, oper- the, the, the place where they put him in the booking ultimately kills the guy. Yeah. That's the ultimate issue. The booking is so bad. It's so bad that Del Rio's not getting any opportunity to chase after any independent title and, you know, whatever the case may be. So, I mean, it's just it's hurting him so much right now and it's it, it sucks and that's where it's really ultimately putting him at. So. Yeah. I, I hopefully he never. I hopefully he learns his lesson, and hopefully he never ever come back to the WWE. If, if he come back, he's gonna be in the same predicament again. They promise. I heard they, they promised him stuff, and WWE lied to him. You know. I mean, it's not that the WWE lied to him. It's just that you know they they gave him money. You know, we, you're, the WWE doesn't really sit there and say you're gonna get this storyline with this superstar. It comes as it goes. Yes. You know, as a superstar, you're there to collect your money. That's the that's how it is, you know. You don't, you know, say that. Oh, I'm, I want this storyline with that superstar. I mean, you gotta earn your, you gotta basically earn it. You know, you gotta wait for, you know, your time to come if you want a big title shot. Del Rio had that when the when the rosters were split in early or, or mid 2000s. So I mean that I mean that's that. You know, what else do you want to, you know, go about it? You know, Del Rio's at the point where the WWE's not doing anything with him. They dropped the ball with him. Now it's time for him to move on. You know, I don't, I don't expect him to resign. If he does resign, it will shock the hell out of me. But a lot of people are still, you know, on with that whole Paige thing since they're in a relationship. Is Paige going to go, you know, with him? If I think Paige's contract's up next year. Yeah. Do you think? Um, I think she's done too. You think Paige is going to be done with the company once her suspension's up? Yep. Really? If she was smart. What's smart about it? I mean, she's still given, you know, yeah, she's not in the title picture. She had, like, multiple runs as diva slash women's champion. But I don't think that, you know, she provides great depth. You know, she's still very young. She's yeah. not even in the prime of her career yet. Yeah, you're right, but I don't understand these these women wrestlers, the guy wrestlers, they, they screwed up. Another example, I heard Bo Dallas um, was, um, Having issues in the airport. Come on now, Bo Dallas. Gives a shit about Bo Dallas. I know. I'm just saying, but it's. I don't give a shit about either. But if W was smart when they had him, he should be with his brother. But probably won't be a great, um, um, stable. You know. With who? With his um Bray Wyatt. Well, it won't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, it just unless he wants to end up growing a beard out and growing his, you know, you already know he already has his hair long enough, but if he wants to dye his hair, I mean, it just would not really make a whole lot of sense. I mean, Bo Dallas is too into that whole Bo Leave ordeal character, and it's just, I, I can't picture him with uh, his brother. Yeah, stupid. I, th- I think um, Bray Wyatt, no, bar none, he's awesome. I just, hopefully one day, he becomes champion. He, he's overdue. I know, he, he, I know, I don't know if you told me, or someone told me, he don't need no belt, but he's, he's good at what he's doing, you know? Excellent promo. He can have great matches. I mean, putting the title on him, it will, it, will, it will come as it goes. You know, like I said with the old Del Rio, his time will come when it comes. I just hopefully, W just say, I hopefully, Bray Wyatt says, you know what? I'm not going anywhere in this company. I'm leaving. Now hopefully that does not come down to that one day. He will. I promise you, they'll give him a title shot. Okay. Probably, or he'll probably give him, get a title within the next or so. Yeah, hopefully this time a title win. I know he had a, so many opportunities for a title shot, but he never won it yet. No, nah, not yet. Okay, um, off the record, sometime in October, me and my dad are going to the house show. I'm assuming it's Raw, so I can see like Bailey, Sasha Banks, if Sasha Banks is back by then. Um, have you been to a live uh, house show or live event they call these days? Many of times. Okay, you like them better? They said they, 
those are way better than, than pay per views for, because I guess they have more time to to wrestle. And or oh uh, well, I mean the house shows can be really good. I mean I really like the Roblox show. That was a house show on a live show. Oh yeah. Um, so I mean house shows are pretty fun. Yeah. Um, and they are so um, they're not expensive like Raw or any pay per view. You know, they're not really. Ex I mean, you know. They don't have the the super nurture because it's not raw or SmackDown or pay views, you know. Yeah. So I really wish it was a SmackDown. I could see AJ Styles, but it's okay. Maybe next time they they could come out here SmackDown. So what's your thoughts on uh, John Cena? Is not gonna wrestle that much. He's a part time wrestler. I'm I'm assuming he is. Cena really, you know, I everybody thought that he's going to end up defeating AJ Styles at SummerSlam. That turned out to be, you know, good for AJ Styles, and it still keeps incredible in the company. But because he really needed to defeat John Cena both times, but John Cena is now, you know, he's now looking at his, you know, career outside of wrestling. You know, becoming a part-time superstar. You know, he's not draining down our throats all the time. This is the kind of Cena that fans wanted. If he's going to end up keeping his same character, his same per persona. Um, heel Cena. I would love to see Heel Cena every single week if he was a heel. Yes. But, you know, Cena's now keeping his character. He's now you know, part-time, and that's fine. I, I think that they're going to be holding off John Cena's, you know, 16-time championship reign until probably his last either match or possibly in a, in a big, big match. Yes. That involves the title. So you think he's gonna get now tower shot before he hangs it up, huh, Justin? Is that is that your prediction? Yeah. Okay. He's gonna tie Rick for the record, then break it, or just tie it overall. Tie it. Okay. So he's not gonna break it. Nah. Okay. I think he will. I don't think any wrestler, um, you know, from the L belts, I don't think any wrestler deserves. I mean, that deserves. Like, like a nine time IC champion, come on now. Y2J, I know it's Y2J. I, I don't know, maybe this is a stupid subject, but I always have issues when, when people win multi times uh, champions. You know, it, it was ridiculous that one year. You know, like, I don't know what year it was, but hot potato, hot potato, you know? I think it was 2011 or 12. It's, it's freaking stupid, you know? It's only if it's credible. Yeah. And, and, um, I don't know, um, you got any, um, do you, um, you want Mania or Rumble or any big pay per view coming up in 2017 or anything you really have your eye on this year or next year? Oh, I want to see some pay per views come to Arizona. I mean, that's where I'm based out of. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I caught the Royal Rumble when I was out here, I caught the Mania that was out here. I mean, I caught multiple shows that were out here. I mean, WWE needs to start, you know, venturing into, like, the more of the West Coast market because they really stick to the East Coast and Central regions of the United States. I think if they come more into the whole West Coast, they should, they'll probably get a lot more fans. I believe. But, I mean, I would love to see some pay-per-views, you know. Maybe not another, you know, WrestleMania probably won't hit Arizona probably for the next four or five years. Really? Yeah, I, I just don't think, because I know the WWE is really into having a credible, you know, arena. You know, that's why we're not going to see a WrestleMania, you know, a North Dakota, yeah. a Utah, um, you know, these random states. Because when you think of WrestleMania, you think of the big cities. You think of, you know, places like, God, uh, Orlando, Florida, Fort yep. Lauderdale. Uh, Los Angeles. I mean, they can probably do one in Las Vegas. Yep. Um, they can do one in. I mean, the, the Vegas show in, in um, at WrestleMania Nine was a was a was a complete downer. But yeah. I mean, you think of the big like you say, like Dallas was big. I mean, they can probably you know if they want to do it again, do Arizona probably around 2020, 2021 time. But you know, the WWE always announces their. You know, summer or their WrestleMania is you know the day of the SummerSlam. Where is it going to be the following year? Yeah, so. mo most likely. Yeah, 
I really wish, I know I mentioned this over again, Chicago needs it again in in Indiana, but it's never going to happen because all these brand new stadiums and, they, and McMahon wants it before the NFL gets it for Super Bowl, you know? He always wants to get it f first, you know? Always. Yeah. So, agreed. whatever. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the travel, but in the long run, if you think about it, it costs money. The hotel room. Um, everything costs money, but you only live once. So, I don't know, but... I might go to Orlando for WrestleMania 33, but right now it's nothing to confirm yet, you know? Yeah. So, with my dad and myself. So, I was going to go to SummerSlam this year, but um, things came up, so... So, that's okay. Um, um, before I let you go, what was the best match, in your eyes, for SummerSlam? For 2016? Uh... I like the I like the John Cena AJ Styles match. Oh yeah, that was awesome. I thought that match was pretty was, was pretty yes. good. What was the worst match of the night? Uh, I can't really tell. I I mean I don't want to knock anything off because SummerSlam was actually a pretty good show. It's just the show was kind of in a clutter. It was kind of like who the hell you know set up the actual matches. I mean, I like the women's matchup. I like the universal matchup. I mean, if you want to talk about the entire card in general as to why I think, it, you know, with the ult the ultimate worst match on the card was, uh, it's tough. I could say maybe the Miz and Apollo Crews because it was like, it, it, it got the uh, Divas match treatment where it was only like five minutes. So... I mean, that's that. I mean, it, 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 no one really gave a shit about that match, so. Yeah. So, um, this wraps it up. You want to do any shout-outs? You want to plug your social media? Go ahead, man. Take it away again. Yeah, like I said, you know, in the beginning of the show, I mean, follow me on Facebook. Follow, you guys can just follow my name, Justin David Kish. That's also my Twitter handler. Uh, check out my website, nexusportsnetwork.com, and, you know that there you can find a lot of great sports coverage. I mean, if you guys were talking and want to talk about you know football, baseball, uh, the NFL draft, you know my, uh, minor league baseball, arena football, you know basically anything in the world of sports, you guys can find all that on that website. Um, I'm very active on my Facebook page, mainly talking only sports. I don't like to put my personal life out there. It's just not me. If you guys want to get to know me personally, you know, add me on Facebook, then message me. I'm a very friendly guy. Um, if you guys I'm gonna put me shows, you know. Contact me on Facebook. Put me on. Contact me on Twitter. So, I'm a very easy guy to, you know, get along with and contact. So, just like I said, Twitter at Justin David Kish, Facebook Justin David Kish, and that's basically it. Yeah, all his social media accounts are down below. Subscribe to him. Follow him on Twitter and all that good stuff. And another thing is, my friend named Gavin. I'm not too sure if you heard of him, Justin. He met a lot of celebrity. He met a lot of legends so far. Scott Hall, uh, Raven. And all good stuff. Um, have you heard of this guy? He's a YouTuber. Have you heard of him? I have not. Okay, he's from U he's from UK. So good night, my viewers. Oh, uh, good night, Justin. Thanks very very much for coming on board. I really appreciate it. No problem, man. Yeah, I cannot wait for football. It'll be here for you before you know it. You got college football. You got the NFL. Oh man, I cannot wait. It's going to be a great time, a great ride. So good luck to your NFL team, good luck to your college team. And that wraps it up. And this is your host here, Team RRI. Have a good night, my viewers. See you next episode of Wrestling Podcast, episode number 54. Peace out.